All right. Hey, everybody. It's Coach Adam here, club head coach at Mount Hamilton Youth Soccer Club. Um, I have here with me a very special interview. I'm really happy to introduce Chris Nanko, Forge FC. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. I'm doing good, man. Um, so I always, I, I always like to start off the interviews with uh, the Forge players that have won the first ever, forever first championship for us. Uh, how does it feel? Like, tell me a little bit about what it is to be like forever first. How does that feel? Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's an unreal feeling. Like, uh, you know, when, when we were thinking about it at the start of the season, it seemed like something that was so far away. Um, you know, something that we couldn't really grab onto. But then, you know, as the season went on and you seen us, uh, you saw us performing well and, uh, you know, putting some points on the table, uh, you know, it's, it's, it seemed like something, you know, like that, that we can accomplish. Uh, and then when it got to that point, you know, we, we didn't take the moment for granted and we, we went in there and got the job done. I think some guys on our team are still, still living on that moment. Uh, and we're just trying to get back into to another season and having a successful season. So um, for me, uh, being born and, and raised in Hamilton, being born and raised in Canada, to me, you know, on the outside perspective, not from a player's view, when I walked into Tim Horton's field and I saw the pitch ready to play and I looked around and I saw the fans, for me, I wasn't even playing and I was getting, I was getting chills down my back. Just to be in Canada in the Canadian Premier League, can you take me through the feeling of the first time when you're walking out, holding the, the child's hand or whatever, that feeling that you had the first moment that you were said, this is for real right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, like just going off of that, just like growing up, you didn't really experience that kind of stuff, like being raised in Canada, uh, me being raised in Brampton, you didn't really experience that stuff, like professional soccer wasn't around. Uh, you had to kind of travel to get those experiences, right? Um, but, you know, it was just that first game, like, I, it was it was more than I expected. Uh, I'll say that it was definitely more than I expected. Um, I knew you know Hamilton fans were passionate about their sports and everything like that, um, but I, I didn't know that was going to be the turnout. Um, so once yeah, once I took a step out out of the tunnel and saw all the fans in the stadium, saw the uh, like heard uh, the sound of them cheering and stuff like that. Uh, it was it was unreal. It was an unreal experience, and I was just trying to you know capture the moment. I've definitely, like, in my career, I've definitely played in, in some pretty big crowds, but, you know, just Hamilton, it, it's definitely up there. You mentioned, you know, growing up and how you grew up in Brampton. And, you know, it's really special to have players from Hamilton or players from Brampton or players from just around the GTA or Hamilton in general that, that look and see you and, and it's a real thing for them. Um, and so for having them when they're growing up, they're watching you and aspiring to be like you. And is there any players that you watched and you aspire to be like? Um, yeah, growing up around the area, uh, Kyle, Kyle Becker plays for Forge. Kyle Becker was one of the guys that, you know, when I joined the Sigma program, uh, he was, he was there, he was in the older age group. Um, and he was one of the guys that I looked, uh, looked forward to, to watching and, and playing with, um, uh, on Sigma eventually in the, on the men's team. Uh, so yeah, when I got to, when I got to Sigma, he was, he was one of the guys that stood out to me, um, knowing him around the area. Uh, and then, you know, just like guys that I would watch, like professional guys were, I, I really liked watching uh, Ronaldinho and like the Brazilian players. Cause I, I love the Brazilian style of playing, uh, playing with like flair and enthusiasm and just expressing yourself on the field. So I love Ronaldinho too. Growing up, I think Ronaldinho yeah. the same age. Anyways, you you know his touches on the ball were unbelievable. He, he, to me, I think he's still one of the best freestyle type of yeah yeah for sure. Players. You can go on with the list of him. Um, but speaking of touches, speaking of on the ball, you know during this time of COVID nineteen, like what are you doing personally? I know you probably have your you know your team uh, schedule that you have to do, but what yeah. is Chris Nanko doing personally? in order to stay, you know, fit or at least sharp on the ball during this time? Yeah, like you said, we definitely have our, um, our team uh, schedule and our team workouts and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, obviously I just try to get my touches on the ball, uh, whether it be in like my backyard or whether I have to go onto the street or something, uh, you know, try to get, keep my touches on the ball, do, do some technical, technical work, uh, dribbling in and out of cones and stuff like that. 
uh, any any little any little workouts I can get in from uh, here and there, uh, just to keep my footwork uh, at the best um, at the best part of of me or whatever. Um, that way, when we get back into the season, it's uh, there's not such a gap between uh, when we started and and this break, and then when we're starting up again. Yeah, exactly. Like I was just mentioning to you before. Uh, we have this interview that I was doing, you know, Facebook Live videos. We're just trying to keep connected during this time. Um, I, I have to ask for sure. Uh, it's not necessarily soccer, but, you know, we see on Instagram, we see on YouTube, apparently you're pretty good with a pair of clippers in your hands. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to have much to do with me, but um, <laughs> are there any other special talents that we are unaware of that you know that you got going on? Um, I mean, yeah, I like, yeah, you said I like the, the Clippers, uh, yeah, I cut hair every now and then. Um, I've been doing it since, since I went off to college pretty much. Uh, so that's been like six, seven years now, I think. Um, and then, yeah, like just growing up, I've, I've just been like all into the like arts and stuff like that. I used to draw when I was younger. Um, so I'm, I'm into that stuff, like architecture, all that stuff. Uh, and then also, uh, I have my own clothing brand as well which I'm wearing right now. <laughs> oh, shout out to your clothing, clothing brand. Good. Yeah. Um, what's the name of your clothing brand? Uh, so yeah, it's all, uh, so I have my, my business, which is the haircutting and the, the clothing brand. It's all together. Um, and it's called kicked up culture. Um, so you can see it on Instagram at kicked up culture. No, no E in the kick. Um, but yeah, so it's on Instagram. Uh, I post every day and stuff like that. So you can see all that stuff there. Absolutely. We'll have to check that out for sure. Um, so, you know, I always say this as an athlete, you know, growing up, me playing, you know, even athletes that we know, we like our routines, like we're, we're kind of, we're, we're, we're habit style people. Now I want you to take me on a journey through the day, game day for Chris Nanko. When you lay in your bed, you open up your eyes. What happens from then on? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so let's say it's a, it's a weekend game or earlier game, like during the day. Uh, I'll wake up, um, just uh, get get a, a nice breakfast in, uh, and then if it's during the day, it's usually probably around one o'clock or something like that. Um, then uh, yeah, I'll get a nice breakfast in, um, just hang out with my family for a bit before I have to before I have to leave and go to the stadium. Uh, and then uh, once I get to the stadium, uh, I'll get into the stadium. I'll have my music going. I'll say say what's up to the guys. Uh, you know, everybody's everybody has their own routines and stuff like that. But yeah, I'll say what's up to the guys. My routine is I usually have my music in. I go to do some stretches. Uh, might have a little snack when I get there. Um, yeah, do some stretches, do a little ab workout just to get my core going. Um, and then, uh, then I like uh, hop in like the tubs, hot tubs, get warmed up and stuff. Get my get my equipment on. Uh, we'll usually have a team meeting uh, just to go over some last minute things um, before we head out. Uh, and then we'll talk as a team, uh, no coaches, uh, talk as a team, just the players uh, in a little huddle, head out onto the field. And then uh, me and uh, Kwame Awuo, we usually warm up together uh, before we get into the actual team workout. So we'll usually be doing some keep ups, doing some passing and stuff like that. Just joking around, having a good time, taking in the atmosphere. Uh, then we get into the team workout. Do the team workouts, possession, crossing and finishing, stuff like that, uh, dynamic stretching and stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, back into the locker room, uh, get ready, suit up and everything, and then head back out for the start of the game. I like that. And, and you actually mentioned, um, you mentioned a little bit uh, on music. You said something about music. And then right there I go, yeah, yeah. if I was to look and grab Chris Nanko's phone, <laughs> what's the last song that was on his playlist? And so that's what I'm going to ask you. What is like the last song you're listening to? I don't know if you want to check now or what do you, can you remember what you're listening to or and what gets you hyped for uh, games? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big like hip hop and then R&B kind of guy. Um, but yeah, for games, I usually listen to a lot of, a lot of hip hop, a lot of rap. Uh, so I'll listen to like Drake or like The Baby or No Baby or like, uh, like rap, rap artists like that. Uh, Meek Mill is a big one too um so that's what yeah that's what i listen to games on my downtime i like to listen to like r&b and stuff like the weekend so uh i like a lot of toronto uh artists so drake the weekend 
Party Next Door and Tory Lanez are kind of like my top artists, kind of. Um, but yeah, during, yeah, my last, I think what I'm listening to right now is probably, uh, for the most part, it's probably like Tory Lanez's new album and The Weeknd's new album, too. Good. I like it too. There's there's a whole there's a whole lot lot of lists there, but that's good. Yeah. Um. So, on a on a more serious note, you know, in being in your position, you have a is an amazing position to be in, and I know that you know all the players, parents, and you know coaches and people watching this, um, they respect and they aspire to be someone like you. And so what does it mean to you to be professional? And like, what does it mean? Like, like how does being a professional athlete make you a better person? Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely, it makes me realize that, you know, like, uh, as much as, as much as like, I don't think so, but uh, it, it makes me realize that I'm uh, an important person in the, in the community. Um, you know, like kids look up to you, you know, parents, parents look up to you, um, to be a, a role model for their kid. Um, and I noticed that ever, even before being professional, I noticed that even when I was in Sigma, you know, the younger age groups of Sigma, uh, were looking up to us watching the games and stuff like that. Um, and then even when I went to college, you know, after games, kids would come up to you and, and ask for autographs. Um, and then, yeah, just going into professional, it just takes it an, another step. Uh, another step up and yeah you just got to be that role model so it, it, it means a lot to me um to be able to to be a role model for kids uh and that's part of the reason why I wanted to come back to to Canada to play soccer after doing a little bit of time in uh, America uh because I wanted to start something up in Canada and and give kids the opportunity to you know see a professional uh, environment and be able to reach out, reach out to different players and stuff like that, that would help them reach their goals. Um, so that's a, a big reason why I came to, uh, the CPL. Um, so yeah, just, yeah, just being able to be that role model for kids is, is important to me. It doesn't have to be soccer. It doesn't have to be anything. I've asked this question before, but what is important to you as a human being, especially during this time? Um, definitely during especially during this time definitely family i feel like uh i've gotten a lot of uh a lot of time to spend with my family now uh especially because for the last i don't know seven seven eight years i've been away uh, because of school in america and then playing professionally in america uh, i didn't get to see my family a lot so definitely during this time I, I like to spend a lot of time with my family and catch back up with them and you know just build those relationships up again I agree with you during this time, you know, sometimes it's, you don't always get to be with the people you love, but you got to make the best of what we have here and, and stay healthy and stay. Exactly. Um, you, you mentioned about, you know, being a role model and, and someone that players can look up to. And as I'm kind of closing our interview here, um, do you have any, any advice for a young player, you know, who's aspiring to be a Canadian professional or to play in the CPL? Um, I would say just keep working, keep working hard, uh, you know, try to get your touches on the ball, try to try to do something that's going to bring you uh, closer to that goal. Uh, try to do something every day um, and, you know, just keep working at it. Uh, everybody has a different path and everybody, um, yeah, everybody has a different path to get into where they want to be. Um, and my career is just like uh, an example of that. I, I feel like I thought I was going to go pro uh, when I was in high school. Uh, with the, all the different places I was going in Europe and stuff like that. And then I ended up going to college and four years later, I, uh, I went pro. So uh, everybody has a different path. There's a different timing to, to everything. So just, just stick with it. And if you believe that uh, it's something you want to do for your, for your life, uh, just keep working at it. I think that's good words of encouragement there. Um, well, just to end it off, thank you very much, Chris. Um, we appreciate you coming out. Um, I mention this all the time, but we, I make sure all the club comes out to see you guys and I come out and support myself. Um, big fan of the forge. So, uh, thank you again for coming out. Thank you for making us forever first. And I uh, hope to see you in the field again. All right. Thank you for having me. appreciate it. Uh, and everybody yeah, stay safe and we'll get through this all together. All right, everybody coach Adam.
Chris Nanko from Forge. 